He doesn't want to follow you. So, Jack, Jack you said, he go follow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, teach them how to drag. When they say drag them, that is, have you seen police arresting somebody or army? That they pack you, all your trousers, everything, your clothes. They, so, drag him. Let them see what it means to drag so that you understand. Put hand and drag him. Eh, that's not how to drag him. Jack him like this. Carry on like this. They go. Hold on like this. They go. Uh -huh. He must follow you. <laughs> you are afraid of him that is the resident pastor. When I'm giving you order, teach them how to drag him before I tell another person to come and carry you. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> When Jesus said, drag them, he praise the Lord. Now, when Jesus said, drag them, compel them, compel is the Greek word. In the Greek word, it is known as anakazu. Anakazu. A-N-A-G-K-A-Z-O. A-N-A-G-K-A-Z-O. Anakazu. It means to drive, to constrain by all means such as force, threat, persuasion, and entreaties. It means to drive, to constrain by all means such as force, threat, persuasion, entreaties. That is, you are dragging them either by force, by threat. You threaten. In politics, when they want you to switch over, what did they do to Akbabu? They threaten him. If you don't switch over to APC, all your wealth, everything you had gathered will be confiscated and you will still go to jail because we have documents against you. That's a threat. And what did he do? He succumbed. That is secular using anakazu to win people, to win souls into their party. Can you now see the war using the principles of God meant for God's children, meant for the church of God to excel? That's why Jesus said the children of this world are wiser in their generation than so you threaten they want to be threatened you threaten the one you that needs persuasion you persuade the person with sweet coated tongues Jesus loves you he died for you you are the reason for his coming. He has promised you health, safety, vitality, long life, prosperity, excellence, progress. They want to be entreated. You entreat them. Entreat also has to do with entice. You entice them. What do you use to entice a dog when you have meat in your hands? You have chewable. You throw it. You entice the dog. The dog goes in. It's the same way. It's the same principle that is being said here. What's the purpose of this anakazu? Drag them. What's the purpose of dragging them? Verse 23. 
He says, that my house may be what? May be filled. My house. Which means, number one purpose, it is for church growth. The church is a living entity. It's a living organization. Hence, it's not permitted to die. It is permitted to grow. Every living thing grows. Every, every living thing grows. God hates stagnation. God hates where two or three are gathered in his name. Because that is not the end time agenda. The end time agenda according to Isaiah and Micah in Isaiah chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. Nations shall flow in to his house. Nations. They shall flow in flocks of people. People from afar coming to worship. Nations shall flow in. Listen. Your business cannot grow if you don't apply this principle. You can't experience your blessings. What God has written concerning you. Except you apply this principle of Anakazu. If you don't compel your blessings, they won't come. What are we told in physics? Every object assumes a state of rest. Not until a required force, not just a force, a required force is applied. So even the blessings God has promised you, the blessings are there. But you must compel them. You must put pressure. To compel, to drag, means to put pressure. To exact pressure. To pull them. Many people are living below, below average, less than average. Living at zero level. Why? No strength to compare. They, you hear people saying, what's gonna be, gonna be? What's gonna be, gonna be? What's gonna be is not gonna be. It's never gonna be. What's gonna be must be forced, must be compelled to be. Without it being compelled, it can't happen, it can't work. You are a businessman, customers must be compelled. One of the places in town, they carry mixed dead body water with all manner of concoction. They pour it on, this, on the road. That whosoever is crossing must come there. I don't want to mention him because the world is watching us now. In this town, I'm not talking outside this town, in this town, they use all means to ensure that they have customers. The church has been given the ordinances of heaven. The Bible calls it Ephesians 3.10. The manifold wisdom of God that Satan cannot handle. And one of the manifold wisdom, this is what we are saying now. Drag them. Say it louder. Drag them. Ask your neighbor, who you they drag? Say drag souls into the church that his house may be full. Praise the Lord. That's to say, we are not permitted to see empty chairs. We are not permitted to see empty space. All these places, they are to be jammed everywhere, jammed. Everyone, this 40 days infallible proof, we are moving it May, June, July. Three solid months. Operation drag them. Compel them. And it also enters forceful turn around. Even the name forceful, turn around. Things won't turn, not until a force is applied. Praise the Lord. Why Anakazu? That is, why must we drag them? Why must we use force? Number one. Why must we use force? Number one. It is the only way for church to grow exponentially. It is the only way for church to grow. If you don't use force, the church won't grow. Because the gates of hell, they are there to resist. 
there are invisible forces resisting progress, resisting advancement, resisting enlargement. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So the gates of hell is tearing at the church not to allow it grow. Check this city. How many founding churches, founding minister ministries in this land are breaking grounds? Heavy grounds. Don't mention in the order of Bishop Oyedebo winners, redeemed Christian church, Padeboye, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, Mountain of Fire, Dr. D.K. Olukoya, uh, Deeper Life, Papa Kumuyi. Uh -uh. Just mention the next generation. Papa David B. Ome, Dr. Paul Enenche, Apostle Suleiman. Those are, right, where, is there anyone here in this town that has that capacity? They just celebrated 25 years last month on the 13th Salvation Ministry. Dunamis was 25 years last year. See the impact, see the size. But there are churches in this town that have been 40 years, 30 years, yet no such generational impact. Who is pastoring 3,000, 5,000 in this city? It means something is wrong. There are forces resisting breakthroughs in churches. Check politics. All the people collecting Political form, governorship, senator, senatorial forms. How many believers are there? No, no. How many believers have collected in this state? How many believers? That will show us where the church is in this city. That will show us where believers have been kept. Things will never turn, not until you force it to turn. Your business won't grow. It won't grow, it won't enlarge, it won't expand, it won't advance. It won't prosper. Not until you get angry and engage force. Praise the Lord. Why Anakazu, number two. Is the only way to destroy excuses. All of them, they were making excuses. This one said, I just got married. This one said, I just got a piece of land. This one said, I just bought some animals I need to take care of. Is the only way, force. You use force to drag them, to compel them. People will always give excuses. But no. Those excuses are generated from the pit of hell to take them away from their place. Get the message for first service. Walking in the path of life is explosive, insightful, revelational. Get it, it's free of charge. You'll put it on the net. Satan is a specialist in making people to see reason why things cannot work out. A specialist. Therefore, you must use force to counter every excuse that they want to give. <laughs> you know what it took? The lady that got me born again, you know what it took her? We are couples together. The lady vowed under heaven that this guy, you must be born again. I was ordained, Kopal, they handed over the church, St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Soro, and gave to me, Ganjua local government, Bauchi State, 1999. I was pastoring it, the church was growing. We went out for evangelism. I wasn't born again, no. still a cultist. The principles they gave us to win people into cultism, I applied the principle, it works. 
we were winning souls. Some man are threats with it. Sometimes they organize parties in schools. You carry yourself and go in. You think it's all the next thing. After, when it gets to a point, they shut every door. The one way they bring copy, they bring. The one way they bring. Uh, you see machines. They, they bring out machines. You see machines. You are fainting. You are urinating. They stop every music. They say, welcome on board. Well, this is where you are. So, we're about to do initiation. All of you, you know, you are not stand this way. You don't have a choice. If you make them there, they kill you. Straight. There's no reason. Uh, when you are coming for that party, you must go with somebody. You must not go there alone. You go there alone. When they stand at the gate, you are entered. They say, come. Where your... I don't want to call the name. You say, I, I tried, I didn't see. You see how they will decorate your face. You see how they will decorate your body. When they finish, they still send you back. Go. You must go and bring somebody. So some people, I threatened them. <laughs> they came to church, they got born again. I was leading them to Christ. You are surprised to hear that. Yes. Because I had a religious background, my father will carry us morning devotion, night prayer before we sleep. I was still in church. I was a cultist. I was going to church. I was still youth esco. I was singing in the choir. So even Satan goes to church. Even Satan serves in units. <laughs> because I was a Satan then. But God positioned that lady. <laughs> what I did to that lady, I've told myself in this life I must build house for her. I must sponsor her children. That this is the reward of what your mother suffered to ensure that I got born again. So it's now time for payback. I want to pay her back. Praise the Lord. She will fast. She will pray. <laughs> and I know that she's fasting and praying for me. <laughs> I won't talk. The next thing she will come to preach. <laughs> I'll just change mood. <laughs> you see a defensive mechanism. I'll just tear up trouble. <laughs> that trouble from nowhere. She carried my name, sent it to all her prayer partners. So this man carries the oil of God on his head, but is a cultist. NYC. The mo inside my bag, I still remember. This blue traveling bag. I hung the bag. I carried one small drum round. Since I was a Kigas Club chief. I went to NYC camp. I gathered crowd. After I was swearing in, the governor came. The moment the governor drove out, all I did, I had carried my socks. I, the way I wore the socks, I wore the NYC socks, but there's another one I now wore that has the color where I belong. So where I stood, I was also a platoon leader. Where I stood, I wasn't the platoon leader because I wasn't interested. But the guy they put there as a platoon leader, turn left, he will turn right, turn right, he will turn left. So they've tried several persons. One that say, what's it now? What thing they happen? So the man that was in charge of our platoon, the soldier man, <laughs> I just carried hand and placed, there's a military way you call somebody. I just looked at him and placed my hand. And the man came to me. He asked me, <laughs> are you a badass boy? Are you? I said, sir, we'll talk that one later. 
I say, sir, why don't you pick this other guy and work on him personally? He said, eh, he's good that way. I say, yes, because next tomorrow, the governor is coming. Is this the kind of person we will have here? Work on him. They worked and worked. So, in the process of me trying to show him what to do, I said, do like this. <laughs> After I showed the man, say, ah, we don't need any other person. <laughs> you are the one. I say, sir, <laughs> you see this camp that I came? I'm not there. I know the house. The man insisted. That's how the mantle came on me. So where I stood, I watched some of the guys. I saw what they did. Some with the color of the hanky. They had put it. <laughs> I said, okay. So I passed signal. This one responded. I passed signal. The other one responded. I said, okay. I passed signal. Another one responded. I passed signal. Another one responded. We started connecting and networking with ourselves. The moment the governor drove out, fiam, I carried drum. I started playing. I just told one of the, the war chief was there. So I told him, I said, Chefe, you play gong for me. So he started playing gong. Let me play drum and sing. So I began to play the drum. I was singing. It was the, the people gathered. I have vowed if I could be gathering crowd for the devil. How much more for Christ? You see, we are more committed. Like this is political season. We are not deep into it. Now check their strategies. They are gathering souls. They are winning all manner. From house to house, they enter. All our venues, they enter. One, one thousand, they give. Food stuff, they give. They know that people are hungry. So they use all avenues to force people into their camp. So every one of us, we are to force them to the house of our father. Say, I have no choice. Say it louder. Say it clearer. We must. Because if you don't do it, the person you don't rescue today may be an enemy to you tomorrow. So we must go for them to rescue them. Imagine that lady didn't stand her ground for me to be born again. I would have been, I would have been a terrorist. Heavy, when you hear heavy terrorist. My plan was to go into politics, business. I would have left the state here for them since they did. I would have finished with Cross River State. I would have been at National. That's my kind of person. Since it is in the gospel, we'll finish with the state, capture the state, spread out, global. Somebody say global. global. Say it more. Global. Louder. Global. Convincingly. Global. With threats. Global. Use it to threaten your neighbor. Say global. <laughs> Now, you are designed for global impact. Heavily designed for global impact. So, it is the only way to destroy excuses. Number three, without it, the church dies a natural death. Without it, the church does what? Dies. A natural death. God will forbid when we step out. That's why we must move out. Thank God you say God forbid. Mm -hmm. That the prophet came here and picked you out. And said we should put you as the head of evangelism. So from today you are the head of evangelism. Mm -hmm. So we are. We are. <laughs> So you go and compel them. A church dies a natural death when a force is not applied. 
how do I drag them? Number one, how do I drag them? Write down their names, their targets. Write down your target. Who are the people you are targeting? Write down their names, their addresses, their phone numbers. That you know that they must be one to Christ. We are not talking about moving from church to church. No, 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 no. We are talking about going for the unchurched, the backslidden, the afflicted, the battered. He said, go to the highways, get the lame, the blind. Those are the buffeted people. People looking for solution, looking for God. They are everywhere. Write down their names, their addresses, their phone numbers. Go for them. Uh, business people are using all manner of strategies. You are on YouTube. Suddenly, an advert pops up. You are on Facebook. Suddenly, an advert pops up. They are advertising their product. Compelling you. You can't watch a 30 minutes video on YouTube without you seeing pops of adverts. They are putting pressure on you. Many businesses, they collect, have you asked yourself, how do you receive certain mails? How do you receive certain uh, alerts? When the people don't have your contact, they go to the MTN, Glow, all the networks, they go to them. They buy into their their database to get what they want. So when they are sending that bulk message, you are included because you are using that line. Have you seen now? So you, as a person, do the same thing. Say, I will do it. So you write down the names of the people you want to pursue. He said, he said to Abraham, from where thou art. So start from, he said, it shall be my witness in Jerusalem. Start from your family. From your family to your compound. To, from compound to the street. From street to the office where you work. Anywhere you do business. Compel them. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Male and female created in them. He created them. He said, produce after your kind. So, if you are a lawyer, go after lawyers. If you are a medical personnel, go after medical personnel. You are a student, go after students. You are a politician, go after politicians. So that you won't have excuses. Youth, go after youth. Teens, go after teens. Children, go after children. Women, go after women. Men, go after men. Are you listening to me? So, there is no excuse. You are a businessman. Go after business people. By all means, do what? Compel them. How can people working under you? That's what these people do. To work with them, they tell you, you must be part of us. If you don't, our employment is for social people. If not, and you are enticed. They are sharing forms to people on daily basis this season. You want the oh yeah, go here. Praise the Lord. So write down their names. Number two, consistent prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. This kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. Pray them to accept your gospel. As you go, ask God for utterance. You don't need to talk much, don't argue with them. Jesus loves you. I would like you. Just do your own part. Bring them here. We will do the remaining. Your own is to bring them. We will follow them up. We follow them up. Units. You must double your units between May, June, July. Units must be double. Choir. You double yourself. Sanctuary, you double yourself. Protocol, you double yourself. Anyone that is not forceful, not drivey towards it, will keep you one corner. 
Because when the cloud is moving, if you refuse to move, you will be left behind. No HOD is permitted to give any. How can you have workers in your, in your shop, in your business place? And they are there. They can't win customers to your business and you are paying them every month. You are a joker. No, no, no. You are a joker. That business will never grow. Put them under pressure. Let them go and win customers. It is through the enlargement of the customers that you pay. Engage in prayer. Lord, save these ones. Deliver them. Satan is dragging them. Satan, take your hands off them. The blood of Jesus is against you. Father, whatsoever is their challenge, their hidden challenges, step in. Let there be intervention. The moment I compel them, let them receive answers. Let them receive solutions. You pray solutions into their lives. You pray solutions into their expectations. That's why it's by force. It's not an easy thing. So I cherish the old rugged cross. It's the old rugged way. Number three. Consistently call them. Send them texts. Call them. They may bluff you. You may go. They shun you. Don't be angry. The rule of the game is persistence. So I hear. Call them. Send them texts. Pray for them. By all means and God's means, make sure you win them. Nobody in this church is permitted if you truly belong here and you believe in this place. There is what to do to increase my anointing. When I see that you are responding to this small, small assignment, why wouldn't the anointing in me rise? We can't be preaching to the same faces and you are comfortable. Everybody loves new things. Is that correct? Including you. Say including you. If you don't like good things, raise your hand. You don't like anything good, raise your hand. Then when you raise your hand, since you don't like anything good, we'll remove your clothes from here. <laughs> No, no, no. Since you don't like good you say you don't like good thing now. We remove your clothes. The clothes you are wearing is a good thing. We remove your shoe. Whether you buy it, you bought it five naira. We we'll remove it. Let's see if you don't. So, it means everybody loves good thing. God will send good things your way. God will send good things your way. As you move, as you be on the go, Heaven will exceed your expectations. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Begin to ask him for grace. Lord, I need grace. Grace. I want to be an addicted soul winner. Grace. Grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Where is Dante? Now maybe this. Lift up your hands and ask God for grace this moment. Ask God for grace. Grace to win souls, to go after souls. Amazing grace is the sweetest sound that saved my life. I 
was was lost, but now I found was blind, but now I see. You took my shame, you took my pain. My Jesus gave me His name, but now I reign, I reign with Him. All my days I see His praise. Yet when I Everything that I do, all I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Great, great grace. available abundantly exceedingly grace is available grace to make heaven proud grace ask God for grace to track them the boldness the utterances to be an advertiser of Jesus Christ to be a marketer an advertiser of God's kingdom seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things the rest are dying for shall be converted unto you
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Please, if you know that you are here, you are not born again, please, this is the greatest opportunity you have to surrender to Christ. Everyone watching us live, wherever you are, you know you have not surrendered to Jesus Christ, that if Jesus Christ comes now, you will not make heaven. If rapture comes now, you won't make heaven. Please, wherever you are in the world watching us this moment, I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you died and resurrected to save me. You are the son of God the resurrected Jesus Christ come into my life today I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior thank you Jesus in Jesus name please if you know you said that prayer could you step forward here let me quickly pray with you those of us watching us from wherever you are locate any living church Bible based church and make yourself available there be useful in god's house if you know you said that prayer and you are here please don't be ashamed don't be shy step forward here please let me pray with you paul speaking said i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of god unto salvation it's the saving gospel Please come, come, yes, come, come, come. So but when does I arrive? I need a key. My soul in now. My soul in now. May Jay Tona. May Jay Tona. My soul in now. My soul in now. May Jay Tona. May Jay Tona. that this year I owe you a bit of fried rice praise the Lord hallelujah who told you good music is not sweet huh? good music is what is sweet praise the Lord remember today's feet washing service this is the first day when I come back for the second time for the ministration i will lead us the, in our custom what we do every first sunday of the month praise the lord say father say father open the gates of may 2022 in my favor to help me, help me. favor me Bless me, bless me, advance me, advance me. Protect, me. protect me, defend me, defend me. Deliver, me. deliver me, preserve me, preserve me. Enlarge, me. enlarge me on every side, on every side. In, everything. in everything, in the name of Jesus. Name of Lift Jesus. up your voice and pray that prayer. Open the gates. Lift up your voice and pray. Open the gates of May. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh, let us Thank you, Lord of Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. You may take your seat in God's presence. Join me as we celebrate the following testifiers this morning as they testify to the glory of God in this first day.
of the month of May 2022. We join in our hearts, put those beautiful hands together as we welcome Pastor Joy Collins. Please celebrate them as they come for this testimony. Celebrate them awesomely, celebrate them. Mercy Peter. Please keep clapping as they come forward. Mercy Peter, Daniela Emmanuel. Celebrate them. Blessing Emmanuel. Celebrate them as they come forward. Celebrate them this morning in the name of Jesus. Please, briefly, once I was blind and now I can see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Joy Collins. I'm, co I'm here to return all glory to God for his faithfulness. There is something I was believing God for in the month of April. And I remember uh, that the officer, when he came here on the first day of the anniversary, he said God told him that he should tell us that there is no more, there will be no more disappointment and shame. I held on to that word and all through the month of April, I kept reminding God on that word that he should not let me see shame on that particular thing I was believing him for. It looks as if the devil was so angry about it. And he lingered up to the last day, of the month of April, being yesterday. When I woke up, I reminded God again. I said, show me that you are faithful. And I played that song by that, that is there anything too hard for me? Is it ever too late for me? In less than an hour, hour while playing that song, God showed up. Praise the Lord. I had a call that turned the story around. I got that which I was believing God for. And I'm here to say, Father, thank you for your faithfulness. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Shame is terminated in Jesus' name. My name is Adela Mario Adam. Tomorrow is my birthday. Please celebrate her for adding one more day to her life. Celebrate her. I'm six years old. She's six years old. God bless you. God bless you. No shaking. It is working. And truly it is working. My name is Mercy Peter. But I want to thank God for what God has done in, in, for me. I want to thank God for restoring back the, my daughter's life. It was on March, the second week when I was in my house. And I had a call that my mom called me and told me that she thought maybe because I do plug my phone in my neighbor's house, she called me and told me, please, the person where they, they are better tell and say in Peking, don't pay me. As I received that message, uh, my mom just used that word. I say, mother, it's me, your daughter you are talking to. I use my dialect. My mom say, we come home quick, your daughter is dead. Ah, that very moment I was trying to make up my face I dropped the makeup I put on my dress I went to my sister's side when I went my sister was taking her bath I went to the bathroom the first statement that came out of my mouth was glory don't bath again it don't happen my daughter is dead she has to jack the water and came out by the time she came out me I melted I started crying but when I cried and came to her room, she said, Auntie, don't cry. Let's go to your house. When they came to my house, I was unable to pack my clothes. I told her, start packing. I want to get to the village. As I was packing, she said, Auntie, don't go like that. Go to church first. I said, I'll go. I'll go. Let, let me not cry. Let me control myself. I'll not cry. I'm strong. So after she packed my clothes and put inside my bag, I moved straight. As I was coming to, my, to the church, Along the road, I started crying. I said, wow, God, why me again now? Now my daughter don't die. As I just get closer here, I climbed the staircase. When I was about coming in, the pastors were praying here. So the first person I saw was Pastor. He came. So I signaled on him. I said, sir, please come. So when he came to me, I told him, sir, uh, I would love you please to visit that sister that uh, you came and saw me with that, my sister. That uh, something has just happened to me very big. He said, what? I said, I lost my daughter. So he said, ah, it can never happen. So he started praying. He said, your daughter has not yet crossed over. That your daughter is just moving. That she can't go that, that way. So she told me, can you tell me the name of that your daughter? I said, her name is Victoria Peter. She said, the daughter cannot die like that. So she started praying. When he was praying, me, I was melting. I was crying. 
The first thing I turned around, I saw daddy's picture there. I look at him, I said, daddy, you see, I will not see shame. Why is it that shame is coming? Daddy, don't agree. I was still crying. I was on the floor. The second person that came out of the church was a resident pastor. He and his wife, they were going out. So, pastor, he kept blocking him and said, pastor, I don't go like that. Please come. There is a case here. This baby has just lost her daughter. Please come up. So, pastor, resident pastor came here and two of them started kabashing the kabash. Me, I was just seeing, looking at father, father's picture. I said, father, you say I will not see shame. Don't allow me to see shame. So, that very moment, they prayed for me. They said, nothing will happen. But pastor, he can say, don't go. Wait for me. He came in and bring the anointed power, water. There is power in that water. So when he came in and gave me the water, he said, now nah, be going. I left. Although I left, I was still weaking. So when I got to eight miles, that time, fuel was very scarce. Our driver branch village station, I was saying, hey, God, oh, this man for do people in my rich village. As I was just saying it, I started crying again. One man that was sitting behind me said, Madam, now wait, I said, nah, sir. As you see me so, my daughter don't die. I won't go see him face. The man said, you know they go to church. I said, they go to church. He said, which church? I said, exceeding grace. He said, which one be exceeding grace again? I said, that church where they show for television. He said, which one? I said, that man, he named now Michael. He said, see as young guy, they sleep, trouble go wake up. You get that kind of man, you see the talk, say, you're picking, don't die. Relax, you're picking, no die. When you go there, you will go see him. No shaking. He is walking. Brethren, when I went home, because already you know, when somebody died, people used to say, oh, sorry, but they were dead as dead in my family. If somebody died, if you say, person don't die in that family, they will just tell you they know they die. Then when I get home, my mom has kept placed my daughter on the parlor. She was lying down in the bed. They cover her clothes. They closed the whole window. So when I went in, I opened, they knocked the door, they opened. And when I went in, I saw my daughter lying down. I told my mom, what happened? She said, ah, she just lie down like that. She no wake up. I said, ah, she did sleep. She will wake up. That there is water in me that I was being brought. But since she's dead, I stood there and said, Victoria, Peter, boy, you will not die. Let your spirit come on me. The water I'm drinking, it is no more me, but it is you. I drank the water. I cannot pray. I was still saying you will not die. Then I told my mom I will not stay because I went there on Wednesday. I stayed there Thursday. She did not open her eye. Thor Friday, she did not open her eye. Saturday, she did not open her eye. So I told my mom, I'm coming back home. She said, uh, sit down and say, look at it. I said, no, ma, I'm coming back home. So I had to come back home. When I came back home, I came back on that Saturday. I came to choir. Otenti was the first person that saw me. She said, Mara, I don't hear what happened. I said, nothing they share. I came in and sat and went into the choir practice. After the choir practice, I left. After I left, the second person that met me was Mommy Love. She told me, you're picking no die. She's alive. The third person was my secretary. She told me, you're picking is not dead. I said, I believe. So when I came on Sunday, upon all what they were saying, they were singing. Me, I wasn't okay. I was still crying. Even when church closed, I went to saw Papa in the office. I made the protocol. I told them my daughter is in coma. That I want to see father. They said, father said I should meet resident pastor. So when I came out, resident pastor hold my hand and pray. I was sitting down in that sort of seat. So after praying, I said, God, have your way. They say, workers meeting. That was a day pastor Fred lecture us on discipline. So when I sat down there, I was writing something. I saw my phone turning. I saw my mom's number. I just lift up my hands. I excuse myself. I went out. My mom said, you are picking, don't carry one hand up. He just did like this. I say, if she carry one hand up, don't worry. She go carry the second hand. I say, my mom said, okay. She said, my mom said, ah, which type of faith where you they talk like that? If you are picking, carry one hand. You say, no. I say, mommy, I say, my picking go carry the other hand. Not quite long on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when I came to service, I was called and my baby has woke up. She is sound. Is somebody clapping? Are you clapping or scratching for that testimony? I would have come with her because uh, she told me not to give this testimony. But 
She said, my mom select her be with her. See, she see her too. I told her nothing will happen to her. She told me, mom, I'm strong. Already I'm cooking all cross soup. Already you were here, you will eat. But now I'm okay. As I'm talking to you, she's writing waye next month. So on the 10th of this month, after waye she's coming down here. She says she herself, she's coming to testify. So I'm standing here to say, may the good Lord of this commission be praised and glorified. Are you clapping? You can do better for Jesus. Whatsoever looks dead in your life by the power of his resurrection, it is coming back to life this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is okay. My name is Iwe Bless Emmanuel. I want to thank God for adding one more year to my years on it. God is doing something new in your life. And again, I want to thank God on behalf of my, my sisters. I'm thanking God because we were about six in number. Uh, five girls and one male child. I want to thank God because that came in and took down my only brother this year. But I, I, I still want to thank God on behalf of my life and my sisters that we are alive for that woman I'm, I, I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord I say may his name alone be praised forever in Jesus name I also want to thank God for adding one more year to my marriage I say may his name alone be highly praised forever in Jesus name in the name of Jesus church in your seated position just lift up those signs in just two minutes just appreciate God for these testimonies let them be permanent let God do beyond these expectations in jesus wonderful name we pray in the name of jesus it's offering time it's offering time bible speaking they say we should not appear before him empty please if you're with your tight please can you just come forward if you're with your tight please can you just come forward and present it to the lord almighty this morning for the blessings please tight us come forward while those of us in our seated positions please package your offerings and your other kingdom investments if you know what you brought in this first day of may it's not good enough for god for all that he has done for you repackaging is allowed you can still do something for jesus this morning lift those tied up to jesus this morning father lord we thank you lord for your people have appeared before you lord in obedience to your words you said it is the doers it is the doers and not the hearers of your word that are blessed Therefore, Lord, for these ones that have appeared before you, Lord, on this first day of May, Father, we ask that all that they have brought before you, Lord, may they be preserved, preserved on every side in the name of Jesus. Let the financial gates of these cities and nations open unto them and their families. There shall no more be dryness, no more shame in their families in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, our Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Please drop your tithe. Those of us with our offerings, please can we just lift them up, lift those offerings up to Jesus, begin to declare unto them as we stand up on our feet, begin to talk to God, send those offerings on an era this first day of May. Lord, this is the last time you will give God what you're giving him. It shall increase on every side. You won't go home empty from today. The Lord will multiply you, increase you, Lord, on every side, your family, your businesses, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatsoever you left as a burden, you're returning back to make them accomplish in the mighty name of Jesus. Shame is terminated. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Cast those offerings with joy as we welcome the media. Welcome to Sort Out Media. Discipleship class holds every Monday by 4 p.m. This class is for all our first-timers, new converts, and all those that have not attended the class. This class is meant to empower you with the relevant knowledge for your establishment in the faith. It also qualifies you to join any unit in the church. Wednesday, 4th May 2022 shall be our Word Encounter and Communion Service with the theme Financial Recovery. We are to come with a fast as we break with the communion. 
Invite your family, friends, and loved ones. Time, 5 p.m. Good news. Next Sunday, 8th May 2022, shall be two power packed services. The first service is tagged Walking in the Path of Life. Time, 7 a.m. The second service is tagged Covenant Day of Fruitfulness. Time, 9 a.m. Invite your family, friends, and loved ones. Discipleship and workers in training continues immediately after second service. It is compulsory for all church workers. There will be meeting and training for all church leaders, HODs, assistants, heads of arms, boards, all pastors on Monday and Tuesday this week. You can partner with us monthly via this account details. Account name, Exceeding Grace and Glory Ministries. Account number, 101-475-8163, Zenith Bank. Operation Show Me Your Souls is still ongoing. We are all expected to win minimum four souls every month and see to their establishment. Soul winning is every believer's responsibility and it guarantees access to heaven's treasures. Remember, it is the doer of God's word that is blessed, not the hearers. John 15, 16. Classical choir rehearsals holds every Monday and Saturday by 5 p.m. New members are welcome. Sought Out Voices rehearsals holds every Tuesdays by 5 p.m. and Saturday by 8 a.m. New members are welcome. If you are a musician and can effectively play the instruments, please meet with the choir HOD, Sister Magdalene, for more information. A Children's Day celebration and service comes up on Sunday, 29th May 2022, which is the last Sunday in the month of May. Parents and guardians are admonished to show into the children's service. Meet the HOD of Children's Unit, Deaconess Favor EGK, as we see to the success of the celebration. All first ladies are to wait and meet with their leader at the close of second service. The following units, their HOD and supervising pastors, are reminded of their monthly contributions, hospitality and welfare, ICT, media, technical and maintenance, evangelism and follow-up, protocol, medical, communion and kitchen, sought out voices, security, classical choir, ushering and deliverance, sanctuary unit. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Exceeding Grace and Glory Ministries Worldwide and Michael Recon PhD. Do well to like, follow, comment, and share our updates on our social media platforms. The audio messages of God's servant, Pastor Michael Recon, are now available. Visit the Sought Out Studio to place your order. Do not litter the church auditorium and also the church premises. Remember, cleanliness is next to godliness. Thank you for listening to Sought Out Media. Exceeding Grace and Glory Ministries, bringing the fullness of God in man. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. The workers are supposed to meet immediately after this second service. But what we are about to do now is a general teaching, not just for the church workers. It's going to be for about 25 minutes. You ask the questions you want to ask and we do the feet washing. When we carry the same spirit, we'll speak the same language. Is that correct? When we have the same understanding, we will flow together. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So, we are calling on Barrister Xavier Mesembe to come take us on this class that we are about to hear. Praise the Lord. If that clap is for Jesus, you can make it better. As you are hearing the teaching, you prepare yourself. Viewers all over the world, this teaching will also help you in your businesses, in your career, in whatsoever you put your hands to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir, for the privilege. Coming around the world is also watching you because we are streaming live. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Shall we rise? Amen. 
Father, we thank you for this opportunity to continue to grow by your word because the Bible says that it is your word that is able to build all creation and give them an inheritance among them that are satisfied. Lord, let there be a massive shower of the building power of your word in this session in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because you are faithful and thank you because you have answered our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please you may be seated. I want to thank God Almighty for this uh, August opportunity to be in the presence of God's people and to be on Mount Zion. The Bible says on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. So there's deliverance for you today again. There's deliverance for me also today again. Your amen is uh, challenged. <laughs> amen. I want to thank God Almighty for this uh, great opportunity once again. And I want to thank the servant of God for the privilege of uh, giving me this platform. First of all, to be blessed myself and then to share God's blessing in this teaching with God's people. Praise the Lord. No shaking. It is working. Well, we are going to share this topic briefly on that 25 minutes as we've been told. Loyalty and disloyalty. Praise God. Praise God. My anchor scripture is John Gospel chapter 14 verse 15. In King James Version, the Bible says, If ye love me, keep my commandment. And I paraphrase it. If ye love me and believe in me, be loyal to me to the end. Another phrase for loyalty is keeping the commandments of the figure you're following, of the course you're following, of the task ahead of you. Praise God. If ye love me, keep my commandment. Praise God. Why most leaders fail is the lack of loyalty. The Bible says what you sow is what you reap. I am following you. I sow seeds of disloyalty. By the time some other person starts following me, that's when I will reap the harvest of the seeds I sowed while I was following you. So in leadership, in successful leadership, the issue of loyalty is very, very crucial. Praise God. Praise God. Why marriages fail is lack of loyalty. Why organizations crumble is lack of loyalty. Why we are having the problem we are having in the body polity of Nigeria today, and most of the countries of the world, can be traceable to lack of loyalty in the life of the followers and lack of loyalty in the life of the leaders. Loyalty to the cause for which they were made leaders. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, in my own definition of loyalty, loyalty is simply being sold out to the master. The master could be your pastor, the master could be your husband. The master could be your wife. The master could be your boss. The master could be your mentor. The master could be the cause for which you have vowed to drive in your destiny. Praise God. Being sold out. Being sold out to the master. Praise God. Praise God. So, now my word objective is as we share this discussion it will help us to know the principal qualification for every minister in first corinthians chapter number four verse two the bible says for every steward the fundamental requirement is that you should be faithful another word for faithful is loyal 
Another word for loyal is accountability. You must be accountable. You must live your life, carry out your assignment in reference to what the master or the cause demands of you. Praise God. Not any other thing. Not your personal whims. Not your caprices. Not the desires of other people. Praise God. In a ministry like this, there's always a temptation. Maybe you are an HOD. Maybe you are a supervisory pastor. Maybe you are a leader of some sort. To please the people following you rather than the people you are following. There's always that temptation to favor the man that comes from your ethnic group than the man that comes from another ethnic group. Praise God. APC members will ordinarily always pursue the course of APC. That's in a normal climate, in a normal atmosphere. PDP members will always, the moment you derail, they call it anti-party activity. And that's another word for disloyalty. So this topic is a double-edged sword. One side is loyalty. The other side is this loyalty. In that scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible says that of a steward, somebody that is called to serve, somebody that is called to carry out a task, somebody that is called to do some particular assignment, is required of him to be loyal. So, when you are not loyal, you are not playing according to the dictates of the game. Praise God. And that is sowing a bad seed. You will not sow a bad seed in your course of life in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever has been committed to you, you will deliver it like Paul Apostle. And God will give you your crown in Jesus' name. Praise God. I was in a place last week. There were issues between the people that are my people. And then some other person that is another camp. So the leader of the other camp thinking, he knows me very well, that if he approaches me, I may take sides with them. Praise God. Came and reported the conflict to me. In the presence of all, I said, Oga, oh let me tell you the truth. I will not support you. Whether these people I believe in and work with are right or wrong. I am on the side. Look for another person you report the matter to. But if you want to call me as a judge in this matter, as far as I'm content, I will take sides. Praise God. Loyalty, therefore, has to do with taking sides positively. Praise God. Praise God. A double-minded man, mind, the Bible says, is unstable in all his ways. So, the objective of being loyal is to make you stable. On the course of driving your destiny or whatever course you believe in. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Objective number two. understanding the need and the requirement of your loyalty will help you to fight the fifth column. What is the fifth column? When the devil sees that he cannot use outsiders to bring you down, he will look for an insider. <laughs> he will look for a disloyal insider. May it not be you. Praise God. There was a great warrior. I was told the story. He went to fight an army that was ten times the size of his army. That had better sophisticated weapons. That had more money than he had. So somebody rose up to me and said, General, how do you think in your wildest imagination that you can conquer these people? He said, I will leverage on the fifth column. The man now asking, what's the fifth column? You know, when armies are arranged for parade and war, it's for four columns. Am I right? 
is for four columns. So the fifth column is not on the arrow. It's inside the enemy gang. So the man said he's going to succeed by one of their own that is disloyal but loyal to him. Praise God. Are you angry? The objective of loyalty is to help you not to make yourself a fifth column. It will also help you to spot a fifth column in your team early enough so that you will not frustrate and truncate, truncate the glorious vision God has called you to drive in life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So when you see a member in your team or your group or in your department that is always talking against, there is nothing leadership and authority will say that he will support. Praise God. <laughs> you are not the visioner. You are not the one God called. God called Pastor Mike Recon to drive the vision of exceeding grace. And he called me. Praise God. So the moment I begin to talk as if God called two of us at the same time. Eh? I'm disintegrating in the requirement of being faithful. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You can never be pari pasu with your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to say this. It is totally unscriptural, unbiblical for us to sit down and dissect, criticize, butcher leadership. I'm not doing eye service. Amen. You know why? Why leadership may make mistake is so that there will be opportunity for another ministry. Amen. Amen. It's not for you to criticize. It is so that there will be a prayer point positively for you to pray and contribute. Father, show mercy to him. Father, if he has made mistake, correct him, direct him, not to destroy. Amen. If the ministry that your leader here was serving had all the spiritual gift and exhibited it, there will be no exceeding grace. Praise God. So the shortages of that ministry is the opportunity of this ministry. So being loyal is a call to looking at the mistakes of leadership and authority and their shortcomings from biblical and godly perspective. Are you hearing me? You are not the one that called him. When God called Moses, God knew Moses is a stutterer. God knew Moses has a temper. God knew that Moses married from the tribe. Bible said they should not marry. But he was a victim of circumstance. God knew all these things. So you cannot be God's special assistant. After God has overlooked all those things and called Moses, are you now from a ministry within the ministry. You know, the opposite of vision is not lack of vision. It is this vision. Negative vision. Uh -huh. Praise God. Praise God. See, we were created to grow from inside out. And this has to do with the core of your redemption. This has to do with the core of your belief. This has to do with the core of your values. When you say, I stand with this man. Friendship is not about being nice to people that are nice to you. Yes. Why most marriages break is because the couples are not friends. Praise God. Friendship is making a choice that Everybody is going to hurt me in life. Every church I go, the pastor is not going to be 100% perfect. 
Every company I work, I might not like everything the boss is doing. But I choose one person. I will suffer for. That's friendship. So when they tell you your friend made a mistake somewhere, you don't go to that play person and criticize and destroy and demoralize your friend in public. You stand with your friend when he's standing. You stand with your friend when he's discouraged. That's loyalty. I'm not reading from book. It's what he asked me to say I am saying. <laughs> Amen. You don't stand there and finish him. That's all friendship. Loyalty is at the core of true friendship. Hey, they say it's still 1,000. To shame them and place more value on your friendship. You pay back 2,000. Carry your friend to the house. Oh boy, how did he begin? Shout hallelujah. I'm sorry, my relationship with your pastor goes beyond family. And his relationship with me goes beyond family. His friendship. <laughs> Jesus said, I no longer call you servant. I call you friends. Why? I believe in you. As you're going into ministry, even if you make mistakes, I believe in you. And I will correct you in such a way that I will not make you a byword to the other camp. I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Ha! May God open our eyes to understand the mystery of friendship. And may God give us the wisdom to apply it in our callings, in our families, in our business, in our career, in our ministry. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Look at the Igbo pattern of living. Amen. When an Igbo man opens a shop in Bedwell and goes to village and brings his boy. If the item is 1,000 and Oga is not around, the boy manages to sell 3,000. He will account to the Oga. That's loyalty. Follow me. Amen. You know why? You know why? He knows that he himself will be Oga very soon. When he serves his stem, they will settle him. And that this work is doing is not his work. It's a seed work. Not a harvest work. So when you start taking the little opportunities they give you and responsibility as an harvest, you want to use it to blow your image. You want it to use it to please people unnecessarily. You are losing it. But you won't lose it in Jesus' name. He knows that this opportunity is a seed, not a harvest. So why do I should change this man? That's why when he in turn, when he has served faithfully and brings somebody, what he sowed, he harvests in that person. So loyalty has to do with understanding the quality of seeds you sow in the race of life generally. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, when you're praying, Father, make me not just a follower of this ministry. Make me a friend of my master. Make me a friend of my boss. Praise God. In Lagos, I serve a man that the man didn't go to school complete. He stopped maybe in secondary school, class two then. He was my chairman. But his royalty, the own half of Lagos. Praise God. When they do a school meeting, the man will address small me, my Lord. Envy started. So this envy developed into a kind of conflict in the entire local government. So the man called a general meeting. He said, you see this young man? He called me, I stood out. He said, it's all Yoruba. 
He said, but amongst all of you working with me, it's not by one in loyalty. He gave me an award. If you come to my house, I show you. Merit award. Praise God. He said, I as a leader have tempted him. I didn't know the man used to send people to bribe me. I didn't know the man has people in the camp against our office that he uses for me to twist cases, twist briefs, twist recommendation. Then, when he didn't succeed, he started using Calabar people. You know in Lagos, whether you are Kwaibo or Cross River, they know you as Calabar. So when these people kept coming, when these people kept coming, I did not change. That is loyalty. That is loyalty. Praise God. The man called me. He said, I love you, but my people don't like you. I don't have power to approve certain contracts. You, you know, except the governor. And if I want to write to governor, they will know. I don't want them to know. Take this money. The next morning, I went to shop and bought a new car. As he had money to share and play. If I collect those small, small money and make myself this lawyer, that status will not change. After this cause, your status will change. As you obey this little information, your service will be purified. Your service will be transformed. And your productivity will shine. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I want to move shortly into this loyalty because I have just 25 minutes. Amen. I said it's a double edged sword. Of the what is required to be, the, to be loyal, that means any other thing you do is not it. Now, as a servant, don't look at the human leaders you're seeing. Especially in a spiritual environment like this. And even the company you work with is also a spiritual environment. God is taking account. Your marriage, God is taking account. Your business, how you treat your guy, how you treat the people under you, God is taking everywhere spiritual 98% and physical only 2%. Everywhere, every atmosphere, every location. Praise God. What does it take to be disloyal? If you understand what it takes to be loyal, eh? you won't have problem in defining this loyalty. Scriptural definition of disloyalty, a double-minded man. I like Pastor Mike on deliverance. If it is prosperity teaching, I don't believe in. What are you still doing here? Do you know what the person is seen doing here? He's building himself as a fifth column. When the devil wants an agent or a conduit pipe to wire discord into the ministry, he will go to that person. Because he has already made his spirit man vulnerable to evil. Praise God. If ye are loyal to me, keep my commandments. Commandment is all just written. Like my attitude. Believe in me. Be See, we don't know how to follow people. By the grace of God... I've been privileged to follow one of the most difficult human beings I've met in my life, Daddy Moses. Difficult. The, I, I said there was a time we had issues in ministry. Daddy went to market and bought machet. You criticize man of God carry machet. In fact, at the end, he didn't even know who inherited the machet. He forgot it. <laughs> we left it and moved on. So in the meeting, he said, Look. You, 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 and you, it's because of you I bought this market. It's there, so. Uh -huh. Thank God I have a witness in the house. Praise God. Praise God. Because I was sold out to follow this man. And this thing happened in the bush. And we have been in that bush for like 30 days. And you came there. 
won't you even pity us? See the way you are talking to me. Who were you before Christ saved you? Who were you when the devil, devil was shattering, battering and buffeting your destiny? And God led you to that man. I destroy the reign of ego in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. That small lawyer who first come at me. Whether the imam, in fact, I, I was even more excited when he brought the matches. Because Nami they settle case. If by looking at that matches, some people will cut down and check themselves. Father, I thank you for the anointing and the wisdom you gave daddy. To do what nobody knows why he's doing. You don't know what is in the mind of that man. Jesus told Peter, let me wash your feet. He said me, no, I don't agree the other ones. This one, no, I think I know better. After all, I walk in water. You are a carpenter, you walk in shop, you deal with wood, you deal with nails. I deal with water. I know the mystery behind water. You can't use it on my feet. Praise God. Because he was contaminated by the little experience of the tradition of Jews. Feet washing is for strangers. To show that you are a stranger and you have been accepted, when you come to their house, the first thing they do, they wash your feet. That's why Abraham washed the feet of those and just for us. He said, no familiarity, I know you. No, be with the discuss this before you contact the other people. Praise God. This loyalty starts, it does not work overnight. See, the seed of disloyalty works like cooking a frog. And we have experimented in the lab. If you boil water and put frog, it will jump out. But if you put frog in cold water and start tuning the Bonsen burners more, more, slow, slow. The water is getting warm, getting warm, getting warm, getting warm. By the time that frog is cooked, his nerves are totally broken. He cannot fly out. That's how disloyalty works in our organization. Praise God. Praise God. That is why he fell to Lucifer. Have you heard? Did God say? Devil said, did God say? Devil didn't say what God said. She said everything. I said the secret. Uh -huh. So devil knew where to enter. Don't talk too much and don't talk to anybody. It is not all telephone calls I receive. There are some people that broke out from daddy's ministry. And they started to use me. They thought they could use me as fifth column. You won't call your master. You will call me. Call me for what? I don't know you. I don't even pick the calls. Now you don't even know where they are in town except uh, Pastor Mike and a few other people. Praise God. Why are you calling me? The moment I pick that call, hello, we start laughing. It's eating small, small. Like the fire from Bonsen Bonner you used to cook a frog. Please, are we making some points? I said, loyalty is at the core of leadership. Loyalty is at the core of followership. The same thing with this loyalty. He said, it's one sword, two sides. It's one coin, two sides. You can't talk of loyalty and ignore this loyalty. Praise God. I quickly run two realms of this loyalty. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, small. Realms, dimensions, stages. Call it what you want to call it. Praise God. Do you know how this royalty started? Stage number one. An independent spirit will be afflicted into you. They will call meeting. You, you will give excuse. Praise God. <laughs> I held a meeting on one of my properties last week. One particular person I will vow and think 
will be there before me did not come to the meeting. So when I went to talk to him, I raised this one, he blocked. I read this one, he blocked. I raised this one, he blocked. You understand me? I quickly, with my knowledge and understanding of loyalty and his loyalty, I said, this one, don't walk with him again. Praise God. I said, the first dimension, so that you will know who is becoming disloyal. So that you will know when the devil is tempting you to cheat you. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is one of the weapons he used to deny people of their reward. You walk, 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 walk. When he gets to where reward is coming, he will afflict you with that spirit. Praise God. To counter Amos 3 3, can two work together except they agree? The moment you become disloyal, the fundamental key of the kingdom that is agreement is withdrawn from your system. So your computer of destiny is all working right again. Stage number one is independent spirit. From the day Absalom refused to believe his father again, he started malfunctioning. You know the story of Absalom. You know, it started when one of his half brothers went and raped the sister Tama. Are you hearing me? I said, this discussion is double age. He hits the leader. He hits the follower. Now, God has given a law what should be done when there is incest. Instead of David as the king, the father, the head of the family, the leader, to stand up and deal with the, the son that committed the incest. David kept quiet. So Absalom in his foolishness. If your leader make mistake, don't follow the mistake of your leader to lose your reward. Switch off from that mistake. Look at the positive side and keep following. It's scriptural. Who are you to judge another man's servant before his own master he stands or for? You don't know the way God will correct that error. You don't know the time God will correct that error. You don't know by whom. It could even be his last one in the house. And because he has the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will speak. Please, am I making some points? If I'm offending you, forgive me. I am loyal to my caller. Praise God. So, this thing is two-sided. It's just unfair. The doctrine is just unfair. From that day that Absalom also made the mistake of disconnecting, an independent spirit entered him. He was no longer going to the family meeting. So because he was all going, he didn't have accurate information about the kingdom, about the king, about why the king do certain things. He started doing things on his own. Every independent spirit that has crept into anybody in this place, I command you to live right now in the name of Jesus. They thrive on secrecy. The moment the thing is exposed, the thing just goes on its own. Praise God. Dimension number two. I'm talking about dimensions in the soul. And I said, first of all, an independent spirit will creep in. If you're not careful, if you don't check it, if you don't monitor the person closely. In the Catholic Church that I serve, when a reverend father starts to do open miracles those days, hear me, or do anything that is not keeping with the tenets of Vatican, they will post him to Rome for close monitoring. Are you hearing me? For close marking. These people are wise. Huh? My father, Bishop David Oyerekbo, says, if you want to make a mark in life, run after those who have made some marks. <laughs> you don't make any mark. Even the small mark, some other people are suffering to make in you. You are scattering the mark. Where are you going? Hallelujah. Dimension number two. Offense. At this stage, the man that has been afflicted with independent spirit and the independent spirit is growing. 
is offended. Jesus said offense must come. Be woe unto those who allow himself to be the vessel. As Solomon became, oh, I want to use him. There are so many of them in the Bible. As Solomon became offended, he was disconnected more and more and more from. You know, he was Akban. He was to be the uh, appearance. But by conduct, heaven call a meeting with David. Say, no, not him. May God never call your boss and have a meeting and it's not in your favor. You don't know when this thing comes. God keeps privacy with every leader he sends, whether you are right or wrong, good or bad. Devil too keeps privacy with leadership and authority. If Satan wants to destroy Nigeria, he goes to Buari. If Satan wants to destroy this city, he goes to the governor. Uh -huh. So whether the governor is good, the governor is bad, it's not your business. Your business is to mind your business. Conduct yourself aright. Do the things God says you should do. Pray the prayer you are supposed to pray. Prophesy the prophecy you are supposed to prophesy and walk. Do right work. Praise God. Dimension number three. Thank you, Jesus. Stage number three. After independent spirit, you have offense. After offense, you have passivity. At that stage, even if the person comes to a meeting, he will not contribute. Even if you say, ah, everybody has been talking, you, you are not talking. Talk. He said, I don't have anything to say. Passivity. P -A -S -S -I -V -I -T -Y. P-A-S-S-I-V-I-T-Y. Passivity. He becomes passive. He will not talk in the meeting. But when he goes out to function as a fifth column, hey, nine BMC, that person is all you. That person will not be you. See, there are things I hate in my life the way I hate the devil. Number one is disloyalty. Don't laugh with me in front. You better hate me for what I am than to love me for what I am not. I hate being taken for granted. Whoever you are, whatever you provide for my life, God has substitutes. Don't devalue me and aggrandize yourself. Praise God. Praise God. And these things work on the inside. Eating you, eating you. The Bible says a living, living, living the whole Lord. After the stage of independent spirit, the stage of offense, the next one is passivity. That is why some people come to church. Pray all the prayer, fast all the fasting, they don't have testimonies. Ask your neighbor, when last did you give a testimony in this church? You are not asking your neighbor. When last did you give testimony? Amen? What did your neighbor say? Or you tell your neighbor, check your loyalty gauge. <laughs> check your loyalty gauge. He has a gauge. Has any independent spirit crept into me lately? Have I been offended? Am I passive? Praise God. Dimension number four. Thank you, Jesus. Dimension number four. This is what I call the critical stage. At this stage, the person will criticize everything. His function in church is inside. But all the time he will sit under the tree outside. Please, I'm not talking to any particular person. I'm, unction, I'm under the unction of the Holy Spirit. He 
may even be in the church. Oh, that's the time he's doing Facebook and WhatsApp. Uh -huh. Say loss of value. He has lost value for this place. He's doing eye service. And nobody benefits from eye service. Now, if you go to talk to him, he will give you an excuse. Ah, there's one important appointment. The worst invention of mankind is excuse. Praise God. Are you already in stage three? Are you taking offense by me? God forbid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dimension number five. I'll soon round up. Number four. Critical state. Critical. He criticizes everything. He has already started a new ministry or relocated his spirit from this ministry. Men may not see you, God sees your heart. Pastor is punishing himself, giving you assignment, trying to carry you along. Someday he will pray for you. God will not show him anything. Example. Samuel and Saul. Do you know that when the independent spirit entered Saul, and he became disloyal, not just to God, but to his mentor Samuel, eh? and he started migrating and progressing in that direction. When Samuel go to say, God have mercy, Eh? The mercy scale tilted against Saul. Mercy has scale. The man didn't know his heart. The man didn't feel what he was feeling about him. He was very positive and he wanted him to succeed. But when he goes to meet the Ogakpata Kpata, it's not everything about you, God will tell you now. <laughs> there are some things the senior pastor will want to tell you he will call your supervisory pastor. There are other things they will call the HOD. There are other things they even look for who is very close to you in the group. May you not get to that dimension. In Jesus mighty name. Praise the Lord. Amen or no amen. The truth be told. Dimension number five. Praise God. I think I have three more to go. The political stage. Praise God. <laughs> At this dimension, are you hearing? The church is driving church growth. The church common vision for all is evangelism. I said the opposite of vision is what? This vision. This disloyal element will start to evangelize people inside church. To enter his camp. Am I making a point? He will drop the anointing and bring political stories and issues. Don't you see that show, Pastor Ward, that day? He's a man of God in a Pentecostal church. He's supposed to wear that kind of shoe. He's supposed to put that kind of record. What's your business? Praise God. Praise God. I said, at this dimension, he will start, if you see him, all about his politics. He's always gathering people. And if he does not have the time to do it in church, he will be visiting them or he will use the phone. So when father says, everybody raise your hand, let me pray for a miracle. His phone will be beeping red light in the spirit realm. So angels are dropping breakthroughs in phone. His own phone will not receive. It's not the pastor. Pastor does not choose who God answers prayer to. That's why you see some people pass up, pray for, and God bless. If you check their life, their life is not really as pure as your life. It's not your business. God knows what he's doing. Yes, at that stage, maybe it's a baby. You, you are an adult. You are overdue for hard meat. His own, his only milk. So don't compare yourself with people. The Bible says, in the time of ignorance, 
God winged at. I am not you. Even if I'm your father. What wise man said, it does not matter how tall your grandfather was. You have to do your own growing. Uh -huh. My grandfather was 10 feet 6. But you have to eat and grow. You have to read and grow. You have to plant good seeds in your life and grow. Praise God. I said that dimension number six is what? Political state. You will start canvassing for support. Most breakaway churches, I thank God for this ministry. If it was broke away, I won't come. He knows me. If I don't come here, go beat me. I won't come here. That's how breakaway ministries and churches start. And that's how they keep on multiplying. Breakaway breeds, breakaway. Breakaway breeds, breakaway. Breakaway breeds, breakaway. I don't want to call names in this city. I'm not a baby. I've seen churches where Oga trusted the leader and sent you to a brand church. Instead of people suffer to pray, people suffer to sow seed, people suffer to establish those souls. Instead of you increasing, you turn that church to your ministry. Yes. You no longer connect to headquarters. You are the almighty general overseer in quote. If headquarters say wear red today, you change the color and wear black. No. Uh -huh. He may not see you. He may not know you, but God sees you. May it not be you in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, may it not be you. Tell yourself, may it not be me. I love David. Amen. David in the old Bible is one man I see that kept talking to himself. See, you can deceive everybody. You cannot. De they say you can deceive some of the people some of the time. Eh? Eh? You cannot deceive all of the people all of the time. That means you, that, that all of the people all of the time means yourself. Every time you're all of the people. Uh -huh. You cannot, uh, Calabar people say, Inwa wo sunsu, Inside you, you know the truth about you. So learn to talk to yourself and be honest. God will help you in Jesus' name. I used to do some things with people like this. When I enter my room and shut door, I say, Kai. Okay, you know, you know well. I had to go back where I need to apologize. Some of them think maybe I'm weak. Yes, I'm weak. But I have to correct myself. If I've grown to this stage, nobody corrects me. I better buy a big mirror. And be looking at myself in the mirror of God's word. And be dreaming so that I will not be bigger than God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Example is Miriam and Aaron, Dathan, Koran, and Abiram. They were playing politics inside ministry. The time God called Moses, God saw that Moses married from the wrong place. You were not there. God didn't even call you as advisor. And in fact, when God called them, God specified. Eh? God told Moses, call them. Do you know God did not call Miriam? He did not call Aaron. All those they thank Quran. It was the grace of God on the life of Moses. That Moses picked them from a nobody somewhere and transferred the mantle. Then they now want to form a ministry. And that ministry, they're not forming it to win souls. They're one who forming it to destroy the first most important soul. This man that passed through so many suffering. Do you think it's easy to live in wilderness? 40 years. God saw all these things. God said, well, I know how to deal with this person specially. Now you're coming to dissect, criticize. Are you not afraid? Some people in church, some people in their marriages, some people in where they walk, 
they are already covered with invisible leprosy they don't know eh? I have a friend. If you go to his south January to December, eh? Morning till night is all day. He comes home 10, 11, 12. When he comes, boom the wife. Boom the wife. Even when the woman is not seeing baby or pregnant. Is this is not just disloyal to the cause of marriage and to that woman. He is disgruntled. So the prayer I'm praying for him is say, God, don't kill this man. I went to talk to him. He said, I'm better than you. I said, how? I'm sorry. I went to talk to him. He said, he's better than me. I said, you better than me. How are you better than me? Things will happen in your house from morning to the evening. You don't pick call from your wife. Sometimes that woman will call other people to rescue her. He has spiritual leprosy. Uh -huh. So the only prayer I pray for people like that is Lord have mercy. Praise God. Late Pastor Derek Prince said he was conducting healing. And one person that had a chronic disease was before. Him. And the moment he started praying that God should heal. God said no, this man does not need healing. He needs breaking of course. Uh-huh. There was a cause of leprosy because of rebellion and disloyalty to authority. So the man changed his prayer points. The moment he prayed to break that cause, he never bothered to pray for the, the sickness vanished instanter. Holy Ghost correct prayer points too. But may you find favor with God. In Jesus name. Praise God. Praise God. Stage number six. Deception. I don't want to talk too much here. When you are spending time to grow out of knowing truth. Do you know it was at the stage of deception that Judas went and saw Christ. Uh -huh. Because I read some documents in church history, they said, Judas said, he knows Jesus. Can you know Jesus the way God knows Jesus? That when he collect the money, he will chop the money. And those people, when they go to catch Jesus, Jesus will disappear. <laughs> now, for what I man now? Praise God. How can you know this man more than the God that called this man? If you have suggestion, let me tell you the way I used to do with authorities, even in my career. You know what I do? I advise them on my knees because I don't know why they are doing what they are doing. Yes, I pray, Father, intervene. You call him. You want the best out of him. No matter what desires I have, I cannot desire what you are desiring of him. Maybe that mistake is even a part of God's arrangement to change the character of the person for good. God wants him to fall small so that by the time he comes out, he will see that it's all that perfect. Praise God. Then I say, ah, why is he doing this? Ah, praise God. Praise God. At deception, the whole world will come and talk to you. Sister, you have not been coming to church, you come back. Eh, no, you will say all manner of damaging things. Anybody that is angry and is talking about another person, I discovered by research. When you finish telling the truth about that person, you will lie. If you cannot lie, you will exaggerate. Yes, you are angry. Your motive is alright. Yes, when you finish saying the truth in anger, you either lie in anger or you will exaggerate. Either way, sin. You're not faithful. You're not loyal. You're not accountable. You're not a friend. You're like one of the twelve. May 
may God not walk with you to a place. He stops calling your real name, David, James, Peter. He calls you one of the workers, one of the pastors. Do you know what that means? Spiritually, you have become anonymous. You are no longer distinguished. You are no longer special. You are no longer dear to him. He doesn't call you the sweet names he used to call. He calls you a name by multitude. At the stage of deception, every disloyal person has a name by multitude. Stage number, dimension number seven. Open rebellion. At this stage, when he comes to church, you will carry dagger. In case the fight will pass his hands. He will bring other dissidents to come to church. Not that he's winning souls unto God. He wants to come and plant seed of discord, disgrace, bring shame on the organization. You know, there are some husbands and there are some wives. When they sing just to this dimension, they invite their family member. They do like they are coming for visiting. They are already fixed there for the fight. May this thing end all in all. If you will have love, there's freedom to love. Yes. They will stop bringing souls to church. They will bring souls to their house to do private counseling. They will stop bringing clients to the company and the office. Their house now will become a satellite station of the office. Where you have problem with men, you run to God. Where you have problem with Satan, you run to God. Where you have problem with God. He's the one that kept this law. It's a command. If you love me, keep my commandment. That of the word is required to be loyal. And when you break his commandment, you suffer breakdown. He said, servants, deal with your master as if it is not your master, it is me, God, that is there. Ephesians chapter 6. Is it not so? Deal with them as if I'm in their stead. Is there any offense God will commit to you, you cannot forgive God? If God needed forgiveness. Is there anyone? Uh -huh. Why is it difficult for you to this small heart you carry senior pastor, put there. Carry HOD, put there. Carry supervisory pastor, put there. Half of the tenants in your compound, put there. Your uncle in the village, put there. Which one Holy Ghost will enter? Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Dimension number eight and the last. Praise God. Execution. I want somebody to read Exodus chapter 22 verse 18 for me. Everything that has a beginning must have an end. What is the end of this loyalty? Exodus chapter number 22. Verse number 18. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus, verse number 22. Amen. Eighteen. And he said, Not 32, 22, verse 18. Let me read it. Thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. Every form of disloyalty is rebellion. And the Bible says every form of rebellion is what? Witchcraft. This is the equation. And what is the end point? What should you do is to kill. And you know, that manifests in different dimensions. When I see that this man is no longer adding to my life, I don't have a problem. 
But the moment I begin to see that this man is reducing the little I get, she, you know, hard. You're not adding. Then you don't know where I'm getting that virtue from. You are reducing. I kill. In quote. Amen. 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 Sir, <laughs> so there was one pastor in living faith those days. A man came to Calabar. Any small thing he will cause. Any small thing he will cause. Any small thing, the answer is cause. They wrote to Papa. Papa sent for him. Prepared a check. Tell him to need that. I didn't tell him why I called him. He prayed and blessed him and released him from the ministry. He said, carry this one, go and start the ministry of cursing. God gave me the ministry of blessing. That's being disloyal to the living faith mandate. In the beginning, it's also, I'm sending you to do what? To bless. The moment you start standing against what your boss is standing for, what your organization is standing for, you are due for Exodus 22:18. In fact, you are dead. Let me tell you. The more you stay there, the worse your challenges. If witches were not biting you, they will come and bite you because they want to initiate you as one of them. Every form of disloyalty is rebellion. Every form of rebellion is witchcraft. And God says, suffer not a wish to live. Are you there? Before Absalom eh, was killed. Who killed Absalom? Eh? Pastor, not be you now. Let us do small Bible. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. People generally say Absalom went and killed him. Say, he's not, he did not die. Because the love of David was with him. Even in that rebellion, David said, please, do everything you do. Don't touch the lad. There's no time God's love has all left you. Until you leave this earth physically. So there's hope for the disloyal. Praise God. Amen. So, David was, the spirit of David was with Absalom as a son. You see what Joab did to Absalom? Was a stage of disloyalty. David said, don't kill my son. He said, eh. So, you want your son to kill us. That is leadership. That is authority. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, by my short opportunity to see light, I have discovered that the safest place to be for all things that are created is under authority. Say amen. I've had a brother that had a girlfriend. My mother said, you see this girl. If you marry this girl, he will kill you. 20 years after my mother died. 20 years after my mother died. The related is dead to that lady. And it was a case of poison food. Uh -huh. The safest place for everything created is under authority. No matter how good your ascension dog is, if you let it loose from the confines of the authority of your compound and your control. You might not have money to pay for the consequences of what that dog will do. Do you hear me? So the fourth dimension and the last stage is death. And death may not be primarily physical. Things may walk and walk and get to a hole. Nothing is working again. When you hear people start sharing testimony that they had forecast, none is working. Check their loyalty gauge. So whatsoever they are answerable to. <laughs> is it the dimension politics is going in Nigeria? They are looking for loyalists to give tickets. No good people. In stewardship, in service, the key 
word is loyalty, faithfulness, accountability. There is no way on earth you would have been governor. By dint of grace and the elective power of redemption, God send me ahead. I carry your hand, your governor. You must be loyal to me. That's the game they are playing. Whether they are right or wrong, I'm not the judge. They are looking for conduit pipe. Don't let anybody deceive you. People that their stream will flow in and out. No obstruction. So, the issue of loyalty goes even into the life of politicians. If I don't trust you, I cannot give you power. <laughs> you know what happened with uh, Senator Gige? With the people that seemingly said they are the one that made him governor. You know the scandal. You know the story. The people, if actually that the ones that made him governor were angry that he became disloyal at some point. But the man is a wise man. No? He ran to God. Praise God. Praise God. So loyalty is a fundamental law of God. In matters of service, master servant relationship, leader followership relationship, mentor protege relationship, master and apprentice relationship is a fundamental principle. Even if you are not a born again Christian, you apply it, you get the same result. It's a universal law. May you not be alive yet you are dead. In the name of Jesus. Some people do pimping. Fine clothes, fine shoes, fine cars, fine assets. Inside their life, warm is eating. They are totally disconnected from their source. Loyalty is the only thing that will keep you ever connected to your source. In matters of source and supply, it takes loyalty. Abraham knew that the dimension of prosperity he needed, human being cannot give him. He refused to connect to the source of king of Salem. I can't change my loyalty. Lest you say you are the one that made this wretched man from a barren background. Barrenness did not only affect their womb, it affected the works of their hand. Praise God. Grace for change, receive it. Grace for cleansing, receive it. Grace for supernatural upgrading of the character of your service, receive it here. In the name of Jesus. Please stand up. Let us just worship God. In one song. Come and make choir help me. My heart, your room. Come and be everything I ever thought I would. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you till my heart becomes a hope for you a hope for you everybody watching us from all the ends of the earth. Stretch your hand.
towards the direction of father. Faith works in environment of knowledge. And miracle signs and wonders move in the direction of faith. He is an epitome of loyalty. I'm not saying it because he called me to teach you. As a brother, he has followed me for more than 40 years. Go and tell him I commit murder. He will look for me. And encourage me. And strengthen me. And defend me. Go and tell him I stole your money. He will look for a way out for me. Do you now understand why this teaching came? Are you hearing me? As you stretch your hand, God transfer that spirit of unalloyed loyalty. You can't get it in the air. You get it from somewhere. Hallelujah. Elisha pass it to Elijah. That's the other dimension of this thing. Father, transfer that spirit. Transfer that unction. Transfer that grace. Transfer that anointing. Transfer that understanding. Transfer that wisdom. That's always helping him to take the right decision and make the right choice in the area of loyalty. I need it more than before so that I will not lose my crown, so that I will not lose my reward in the race of life. Father, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. You have a purpose for this time. You have a purpose for this season. You have a purpose for this teaching. You have a purpose for everybody that is here present while they are present. Lord, I ask, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Please give a powerful offering for Jesus. Is that how you are clapping? Hallelujah. Is that a good job done? Praise the Lord. Politicians, this is when you prove your loyalty. In politics, they don't look for the most qualified. They look for the most loyal. Anywhere you go, your loyalty will be tested. It will be tried. So please watch out. If I believe in you, I believe in you. Even if they said you carry, you rob somebody there, as long as I said, you know, before you said, this is my friend. It means you have something in common, 50% in you, in that person. So before you say, this is my friend, uh, they, you can say, this is my classmate, this is a fellow church member. But the moment you say, this is my friend, is somebody you can defend. I see a lot of betrayals in the body of Christ, which is not supposed to because we don't understand it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I believe, when I believe in you, there's nothing anybody will tell me about you that will take it. I'm straightforward. And when I'm serving you, I'm not serving you. I am not looking for fault because me too, I have faults. Like he said, leadership is fundamental. It's core both to leadership and followership. Praise the Lord. So we sincerely appreciate you. He's a mentor. He's not a friend. I've said it before. He's not a friend. How can your teacher now become your... He has been my teacher. When I was doing company law, business law in school, when we finished, I looked for him. I said, Ogabe, help me explain this. Thing. He taught me English. He taught me mathematics. He's a lawyer, but he was a science student. He taught me physics. He taught me chemistry. Is it the same person that will now, I will say, no, 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 he's a mentor. Praise the Lord. The Lord give you understanding. Nothing makes a relationship last long like loyalty. If you believe in this is my friend, don't sit anywhere to castigate that friend. Anywhere, any day. If you say this is my friend, I believe in this person. Anything they are saying against the person, defend the person. 
when you go back into the closet, two of you sort it out. Ask Sultra, both of us. When we enter my office, we rack things together. The moment we come out, you can't speak against any of us. We defend ourselves to the last. That's loyalty. I am not to glorify or exalt is wrong. The moment I say, this is my covenant brother, that's a loyalty statement. Never you say, I believe in this person. But you know, any but has erased it. Elijah, Elijah saw that Elijah was a shrewd man, yet he followed him. They said, your master will be taken. He didn't even tell you. He said, no problem. Relax. That's followership. The man they mentioned, that the prophet, is a very shrewd man. Hard man. To follow that man, <laughs> you need grace. Heavy grace. You need grace to follow him. And I've survived it <laughs> all these years. Why? I'm not looking at his wrong. That's not why God called me. I know his impact in my life. So please, let's watch it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As our custom is, let's go before the Lord on our knees. Lord, as I bow to you, I refuse to bow to the devil. I refuse to bow to the situations of life. I refuse to bow to... Begin to mention the things you don't want to bow to in this month of May. Lord, in this month of May, I refuse to bow to sickness, disease, torment, indebtedness, lack, stagnation, barrenness, frustration, retrogression. Begin to mention the things. Lord, I bow before you. Jesus, I bow before you. I bow my knees before you. Viewers all over the world, go on your knees, bow before God, wherever you are, tell him, Lord, I'm bowing before you. I submit myself to you. I refuse to bow to the negative situations of life. I refuse to bow to the storms of life. Elijah, to a point, he said, Lord, take my life. I refuse to die before my time. I refuse to throw in the towel because of situations of life, because of circumstances. Tell him the things you don't want to bow to. You have 30 seconds to do that. I refuse to bow to the devil. I refuse to bow to the arrows that fly by day. I ref that flies by day. I refuse to bow to them. I refuse to bow to oppression, to satanic yokes, to satanic attacks, to family ancestral negative pattern, ancient mountains. I refuse to bow to it. I refuse to bow to opposition. I refuse to bow to untimely death. I refuse to bow to losses in my business, losses in my career. I refuse to bow. Now rise up on your feet and begin to declare, Lord, I rise above limitations of life. Begin to declare the limitations you rise above. Begin to declare them. I, in this month of May, I rise above death. I rise above lack. I rise above barrenness. I rise above stagnation. I rise above retrogression. I rise above backwardness. Declare. Begin to make declarations. In this month of May, I shall not be a victim. Declare the things you want to see. Declare the things you don't want to see. In this month of May, my enemies will not rejoice over me. God will not hand me over to the will of my enemies. I shall not be a victim. My family won't be victim. Include all your children. Include your spouses. Include your parents. Include your family members. Include the works of your hands. Include your going out and your coming in. Include your expectations. What are you expecting? Viewers all over the world. What are you expecting? What are you projecting for the month? Make that declaration. This month of May 2022. 
My expectation shall be fulfilled. My expectation shall be exceeded. Hold your phones and make those declarations. My phone shall receive good news. My phone shall receive a lot in my favor. My phone shall receive long-awaited calls shall enter my phone. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue rising up against me in judgment, I declare them condemned. Everywhere, bad word, evil word, bitter words have been spoken against me. I declare them condemned. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. God you will be with me all through. Sickness shall not be my portion. I close every door, every avenue. Satan has opened to siphon my money. I close them. Begin to close those doors. Every avenue Satan has opened. Doors of affliction, doors of emergencies, doors of running elder skelter, sicknesses, disease, torment, police case, court case, emergencies, breakdown of vehicles. I close them. I close those doors. I close every avenue Satan has opened to siphon my money, to siphon my resources all through this month of May. Ensure you are making declarations. It's not time to look left and right. Declare what you want to see this month. Make declaration. Holy Ghost, hammer my matter in the heart of those that matter in my matters. Give them no rest. Everyone that has made promises, every of my position, every of my placement, every promise, let them experience fulfillment. I plead the blood of Jesus against satanic intervention, satanic interference, satanic interceptions, satanic diversion, satanic delays. This month I shall experience fulfillment of prophecies. Every good word of the Lord that have been declared over my life, that I'm yet to experience. This month of May, I shall experience fulfillment. My helpers shall remember me for good. Are there things you believe God for since January that they've not come to pass? A miracle job, a miracle appointment, admission, turn around. What are the things you have been expecting that you have not seen? Make the declaration. Lord, let this be enforced by the blood of Jesus. I command the fulfillment of my expectation. All my hopes and dreams, they must be established by the blood of Jesus. I enforce them this first day of May, this first Sunday, this first service in this month the line shall be falling unto me in pleasant places my goodly heritage shall be established Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please, lock up your hands. Join your hands together. Let's join our hands. Viewers all over the world, you are going to join us to pray this prayer. Let God touch the hearts of federal governments and ask you to come to the point of schools being reopened. A child that is supposed to graduate four years in school is now taking six years, seven years. Why? 
strike today, strike tomorrow, and they are telling us no money in the government, yet a presidential form is 100 million. So how come now? These people are the people training you people to go there. Some of you, you don't even have certificates. And you are there in National Assembly. You are there in government. Why? Say, Father, touch the hearts of our leaders in governance. Federal government. ASU. NASU. To come to a point of agreement that schools resume this month in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Destroy every delay, argument, confusion of all kinds and let schools be reopened this month of May 2022 in Jesus' precious name. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Lift up your voice. Pray that prayer. We cannot watch our children stay at home. We can't watch our siblings stay at home. Pray with passion. Let there be intervention. We can't continue like this. Our children must be in school. Higher institutions in Nigeria must resume. This may. By the blood of Jesus. We destroy the stronghold of delay. Every form of disunity, disagreement, confusion between the federal government and the ASU and NASU, let there be a point of agreement reached. Let schools resume. Lord, remember our children. Let them not be delayed any longer. Step in, Jesus. You are the prince of peace. Release your peace. Release your peace. Release your mercy. Release your peace. Release your mercy. Release your peace. Release your mercy. Let schools resume. Command the gates of all higher institutions in Nigeria. Wherever they've been shut down spiritually, let them be open. Lift up your heads, O ye gates of all higher institutions, universities, polytechnics, college of education, as many as they are, be lifted. Ephrata, be open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. As we have prayed, heaven will answer by fire. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, whosoever has marked me as a target for destruction this month of May, disappoint them, deliver me, preserve me, defend me. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Whosoever, whatsoever has marked me, marked us as a target for wickedness, for destruction, this month of May, thou, Lord of us, arise on our behalf, defend us, protect us, preserve us, deliver us by the blood of Jesus. Oh, Liko patagla, masu prekete, liko topodo, ekwa takata, jata tata, mapukete, liprukede, jato. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> that testimony is a strange testimony. Died for this, came back to life. Lord, whatsoever is dead in my life that must come back to life by the power of that testimony. 
every good thing that belongs to me, that they've buried, that they've swallowed, the enemy has swallowed, let them jump back to me. Lift up your voice and begin oh, to pray. Oh, every good thing, dead in my life, dead in my destiny, that have been buried by the power of that testimony. Let them come back to life. Our finances, our marriages, fruit of the womb, our children, our parents, our businesses, our political careers, our academics, all that concerns us for good, every negative conclusion, let them jump back to life. Everything dead in my life receive life, receive life, receive life, my career, my destiny, my finances, my brain, my academics, my body, jump back to life, be envigored, be revitalized. My family, my children, my parents, my spouse, whatsoever good thing that had been dead, let them receive life, let them receive life, let them be restored, let them be recovered. Every good thing that belongs to me, every breakthrough with my name, let them jump back to life. Hold your phones and pray that prayer. Your own relevant contacts, all your lost helpers, lost customers. Let them be, let them jump back. Your all good contacts. Let them jump back. All your contacts, your customers that are gone on a wall. Let them be restored. Let there be recovery. Every of your helper that are gone away, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Amen.